Dear students, in this module, we're going to start building our methodology to employ dynamic programming. The purpose of dynamic programming and its usefulness comes from the fact that it allows us to compare two very long nucleotide or amino acid sequences in a short amount of time. This is important because biological sequences can be very long and therefore if you're trying to compare them, it can take a lot of time for your computer to finish the job. But dynamic programming comes to our rescue by doing the same task in a rather short amount of time with a little uh, reduced memory requirement. So let's see how the dynamic programming or simply DP works. So to begin with, dynamic programming or DP is based on a scoring function. So what are the elements that are there in the scoring function? And what are the possibilities that this scoring function can score? So there are three possibilities. The first one is a match where two nucleotides, they match with either, each other or two amino acids, which match with each other. For instance, if you have a sequence like this and you're comparing it with another sequence like that, then you have a match here here but you have a mismatch here so the scoring scheme essentially considers the number of matches and multiplies that with a positive score which in this case is given by plus a so a can be any value you can have any you can assign any score to a match but it should be a positive score and in case of the mismatch, the score can be a negative number. While for the gap here, you have another different negative score. So the scoring scheme for dynamic programming is based on three scoring elements. The first one is the match here. The second is mismatch. And the third is the gap. So the overall score as a result of this process is defined by the sum of matches, mismatches and gaps. So let's say if you have two matches, then your score will be 2 multiplied by A. Let's say you have one mismatch, so 1 multiplied by minus B. And let's say you have two gaps, so you will have 2 multiplied by minus c so you sum all of that up and this will be your overall score for the alignment so you will compute the score for all possible combinations of these alignments and you will choose the maximal score let's take an example quickly so i have constructed this example by giving you plus 10 for matching minus 2 for mismatch so it's a penalty and gap penalty is 5 that is minus 5 so now we're going to score every match with a plus 10 for every mismatch it's going to be minus 2 and for every gap it's going to be minus 5 so let's align two sequences so here are two sequences for you so i have aligned them previously so that we can quickly compute the score. So here you can see that there is a gap here. There are two matches here. There is a mismatch here. There is a gap here. There is another match. Gap, gap, match, match and gap. So let's see how these are scored. Here you go. So the gap penalty is 5 so I've written minus 5 here because C has no corresponding nucleotide here T matches with a T so 10 goes here another 10 G matches with a G T matches with uh, T does not match with a C so 2 is the penalty so it's a minus 2 here C has a gap so it's a minus 5 G does not match with C minus 2 then there are two gaps here these ones 
and then there are two matches and one gap. So in this way I've computed the overall score and you know the uh, com computation of overall score is simply a sum of all of these numbers. So the total score is 11. So such an alignment between these two sequences has a score of 11. Of course, if you vary this alignment, the score will be different. So what you need to do in pairwise sequence alignment is to create all possible combinations of such alignments and score them. And the alignment which has the maximum total score, you select that alignment and you finalize it. Okay. So coming back to the dot plots, because that is where dynamic programming is going to take its root. You know that the nucleotides that were matching with each other had a positive score. The mismatches had a negative score. And we filled the entire matrix like that. So the first thing that you need to do is to remove these from the matrix and consider the rewards and the penalty. So this is an example for you. So in case of the match, you have a plus 10. In case of a mismatch, you had a minus two. So here you go, 10, minus two, minus two, minus two, minus two. Here, minus two, 10, minus two, 10, minus two, and so on. So you can fill this entire matrix up with these scores. So once you have filled all of these matrices up, you need to find the optimal score. So as you know, you can compute the overall score by simply summing up the alignment score, but there are many combinations. So we need to find the optimal combination as well as the best alignment will have that highest score.